And that's it. Great stuff. I mean, the the zero one matches. I think they tend to be really, really tense. Mm. And uh, well, for both players, this was massive. Even getting to one one and now facing Jasmine ba Paolini in the third match, whereas Rybakina, I mean, she won a set at least, which helps her qualification scenarios a little bit. But she will basically have to hope for, well, a, an easy win over Sabalenka, maybe. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Or actually, you know what Rybakina can hope for? Paolini beating Sabalenka now, because then she has like a, she still has a shot then. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to be easy. Um, either way, I mean, she's not, she's not going to be the commander here anymore. She is going to be forced to rely on others as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really expecting Paolini to get the win over Sabalenka, so... <laughs> but, so that can still but, uh, work. That can still work for her, right? But then it would yeah. have to be Paulini beating Zhang, and then Rebakina has to beat Sabalenka. So the calendar is not really suiting Rebakina there. Oh, she looks quite upset there. Is that just almost a? Did she have tears in her eyes there? I wasn't quite sure if that was the case, but she looked a bit upset, Rebakina. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Prozheng, huge win. I don't know, can you say it's the biggest win ever, Korea? I mean, the biggest win is probably that one over uh, Shiontek in the Olympics and obviously to, to win maybe the gold medal. But in terms of, yeah, obviously. I would say maybe even the final of the Olympics. Just, just yeah, like the, the final. Olympics. Yeah, the final. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, even more than, than the one against Fiontek for me. But I understand if someone wants to say Fiontek semi as well. But yeah, it's it's one of the best, I think. Uh, Rybakina is obviously still quite rusty, but um, for Kinven to, to beat a player of this caliber and also the way that she did, you know, blowing that mm. second set lead, becoming just, like, so much better in terms of, um, you know, blocking up that line forehand as the match went on. Very good returning. I think that we were... You know, just complaining about it at first, of course, that she was missing so many of these second serve returns. But when mm. she found that range, she really made it work. I think she that was probably one of the plans for this match to come back a little bit further behind and try to hit, hit that heavy return at Rybakina's feet to add the point. And yeah. yeah, when she was not executing it well, it was a nightmare. But once she finally did it, it paid off more than it didn't. So... So yeah, I think it is one of the best wins of her career. And given that she has to play Paulini in the third match now, like it. I mean, it, it's going to be a good chance. I think she holds a dominant head-to-head -head lead over Jasmine. Yeah, and uh, I think, yeah, like you said, just the way that she was able to, obviously having lost that second set, and, and maybe thinking that she could have won it in two if she almost got that break in the second set and then having to come back. I'll also look at the very first game as well. She had a bit of pressure in that third set. So to come through uh, and then, yeah, turn it around 6-1. I mean, that's a great, great scoreline. And then just she was playing, yeah, up the aggression as well. And some of those rallies, you know, uh, towards the end, yeah, she's moving really well and... Yeah, definitely a deserved winner. Um, and yeah, first win over... I'm going to say only her second win. Wait, I'll need to check the stats here. <laughs> but um, obviously, first win over Rebecca, and she's got a win over uh, Sviantek. But uh, yeah, so Rebecca is... Uh, only fifth in the rankings at the moment, right? So, but um, yeah, none, nonetheless, it's been still a great one to have on paper, even if it is Rebecca coming back after a period out. But um, yeah, and probably, yeah, she's the favorite to progress as the second in the group. As things stand, she's on top because we haven't had that uh, Sabalenka and Paolini match yet, but uh, yeah, it's a good opportunity for her. 
I think. And yeah, we still don't know who she's going to be playing. Still much to go in that other group. The orange group. This is the purple group. <laughs> Not sure how they decide the colours, but I think. Um, hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no! I was just asking. Like, I mean, what's the logic behind the colours that they for the groups? Ah, uh, yeah. I have no idea. Um, yeah. It's like orange, purple, or something like that. Yeah. No. No idea yeah. at all. Probably you have any chance against Sabalenka. I mean, on an off day for Sabalenka, maybe, but how often does that happen, at least of late? And um, that's what I'm going to say. Um, in terms of your question, Brazy, about the interest in the WTA finals, personally, not really. I think I will be watching some of the ATP finals in doubles, uh, but I don't really follow the WTA double circuit to be honest i mean you i can tell you who my favorite player is and that's definitely sway yeah, but uh but <laughs> otherwise i'm kind of just like yeah sure <laughs> so um at least not from me um i also can't really call favorites uh, because yeah i'm just not following it that all that much what else can we say here uh Zheng lost to sabanka last time in three sets but i mean she already lost to her twice. Uh, she already lost to her in two sets this event two days ago. So I guess that was actually last time rather than the Wuhan final. And hmm. um, yeah, what else? I mean, great win for her once more. Uh, Eribakina, a bit too rusty to compete with the other players at this event. It's not like she didn't give it a good shot, especially today. Hmm. But it, well, I mean, at this point, she's almost 99% done. It's it's going to be a pretty unrealistic scenario. She basically has to beat Sabalenka, obviously. Especially, you know, it would be very helpful to do it in two and then still hope for some good results in the other matches. And yeah, that is going to be very tricky considering how well Sabalenka is playing at the moment. Uh, but it is what it is. I'm sure she'll be firing more at the beginning of the 2025 season when everyone will have that off-season period and everyone will be a bit rusty to to begin. Can we get a, a, a situation where Zhang loses to um, Paolini and then and, and then and then Rubakina beats Sabalenka? <laughs> and I mean, then, yeah. yeah. Rebekina has to go for three players to be at 1-2, right? That's that's basically all it is. So it could be a Paulini 3-0, or it could be a Sabalenka 3-0, and then three players are 1-2, and Rebekina goes in on one of the tiebreakers. But but yeah, it would be very, very helpful for her to beat um, Sabalenka 2-0 as well. Uh, because without that, I'm not even sure there's a, there's a scenario mm. where that happens. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, she will just have to rely on others plus beat Sabalenka, which is, you know, for starters, that's the tough part already. And, uh, well, um, for now, Kim Van Zhenk, she's just 1-1. I mean, she definitely doesn't have anything guaranteed, but she has just put herself in a great position for um, Wednesday. Mm. And, uh, yeah, just played a lovely match today. Is able to get one of the best wins of her career. Anything more? No. Nope. Any idea what time that match will be on? The match between Zhang and pa Paulini? I don't know if it's the schedule set. Now. Right, yeah. Like, I, I think we know that the timing of the two singles matches will be the same as, yet, as today, but otherwise, like, I don't think we know which one will come when. Because they want to be flexible, right? Because if one yeah. of them is a bit rubber, for example, then I think they want to keep it first and then... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm go with the more high profile one later so i think they're flexible yeah yeah so if it's the early one again it will be probably okay for me to watch if it's if it's uh the later one it might be more difficult but uh yeah we'll see oh sorry guys um all right uh, i guess <laughs> that will be it then as you can see it's getting deep and dark outside my window eat something and uh well of course keep tuning into the channel i don't know if we actually do we have a stream from the next match or not i i i'm not aware of our schedule for today 
No, right, we'll definitely no, so. have more. Uh, no, coming. we haven't. We're, we're going to probably skip the next one, but we'll pretty okay. much have, I think, every match for the rest of the tournament. Certainly, the next couple of days, we're we're um we got that covered anyway. So we most of the matches, if not all of them, will be on the channel. But just probably not going to do Sabalenka for Paulina. Yeah, so probably skipping the next one, but the next um, few days you're going to have everything covered on the channel, so make sure to tune in for that. Definitely tomorrow, both matches. Uh, Krejcikova against Pegula, and then later Świątek Kukov uh, from us, I guess, for today. It's probably going to be it. Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat, and thank you to Eddie. It was super fun watching this match, and, well, Rybakina disappointed, but I am very pleased about the performance of Kipin Schenk. And uh, yeah. And do we think that Eddie will have finished his water by the next time he's on the show? Maybe on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let us know in the Go next bottle. Yeah, exactly. Cheers, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.